Hi, I am Angel Reba with Mind Dahlia TV from the Conscious Life Expo. And we are here today with Bill Bennett. Bill, thank you for being here with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Awesome. So the first question I would like to ask you, Bill, is what makes your life magnificent? What makes my life magnificent? Yes. Living it. Living it. <laughs> <laughs> Living it. Every, um, every single moment is magnificent. Even the moments that I think maybe aren't so pleasant. It's still magnificent. I mean, just to draw breath is magnificent, I think. I mean, I wake up each morning and I think, my God, what is the world going to deliver to me today? And it can only be good things. Wow, extraordinary. For, for those of you who already know Bill, you know, I don't know if you, if you are aware of his you know, last movie, which is actually related to uh, a way of being guided throughout our life. Is that kind of accurate? It is accurate. It's a film about intuition and what it proposes is that intuition is a guidance system. It's, I call it a personal guidance system. It's unique to us and it's, it's a system like, a, like your digestive system or your circulatory system or your immune system. It's just that it works within the energetic realm. And uh, is, is that a guiding system that we all have built in in our bodies? Yeah, we're born with it. In fact, we, um, I, I believe in the concept of reincarnation and I believe that we are incarnated into this earthly plane with intuition as part of our, part of our guidance system and it helps guide us through life. And this uh, personal guiding system, how did you come up with the idea? <laughs> well, something happened to me I'm, uh, 18, 18 years ago now. I was actually in New Orleans, I was working on a movie. And I was driving to the airport early one morning and there were no, it was dark, there were no cars on the road and I heard a voice and the voice said slow down. I had a green light up ahead, I wanted actually to speed up because I was running late for my flight, I was going to the airport. And the voice said again slow down and so I did slow down and as I entered the intersection this huge truck ran a red light on the cross street, hurtled through the intersection, just missed me by inches. And if I hadn't slowed down and listened to that voice and acted on that voice, that truck would have killed me. Was that the first time in your life that you heard that voice? Yeah, yeah. It came at just the right time too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we are blessed we have you here today. Yeah. Did you hear that voice again? I haven't heard the voice again, but, but now when I rack back on my life, when I track back on my life, I can see that intuition has tried to influence me in, in major decisions, in small decisions all the time but also in major decisions in my life, but not as dramatic as a voice, that's for sure. After that defining moment in your life, what did you decide to do? Well, I must admit I was confused. I didn't know what happened. Uh, and I, I'm naturally a very curious person. And it raised three questions. What was that voice? Where did it come from? And why was my life saved? And I started to research and read and find out more about intuition. And the more I read and researched, the more I realized that what happened to me wasn't unique. It wasn't special, it wasn't something that was particular to me. This kind of thing happens all the time and it saves people's lives. And that then propelled me into making a film about it. I mean, the way that I explore the world <laughs> is through making films and I decided that I, I would make a film about my search to find out what that voice was and where it came from and why it saved my life. All right, so you obviously are a very experienced filmmaker, so how did you start the journey to make your, last, your latest movie a reality? Well, at first I started the way I've made all my other movies, and I've made 16 feature length films, so I am experienced. And I started out trying to do it the way I've made all the other films. And that simply is, you set a goal, you set an intention, and then you blast your way through <laughs> to achieve that, you know, you use ego and personality and will force and you know all the type A personality characteristics if you like but I discovered that that just didn't work in trying to make a film on intuition using my ego and my willpower just wasn't cutting it and I discovered probably a decade into trying to make this film that the only way that I could make the film 
was by making it intuitively. And that was hard. Exactly. So the previous 15, you would say that you would use your ego and your real power and... Yeah. So was there a difference? What was the main difference while you were making the movie compared to the other ones? Well, compared to the other ones, I always had control. I mean, I, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes a movie can get out of control, but you bring it back into control. And I, I always had control over the films that I both produced and directed. I mean, as a producer and director and going through my production company, you have ultimate control. With this movie on intuition, I had no control. And I realized that, in fact, that turned out to be the best way to make the film, by letting go of control, which meant you've got to let go of fear and you've got to, you've got to trust. And you've got to trust that whatever is going to happen, you've got to be very sensitive to the moment and what comes to you in all sorts of intuitive ways. And you've got to try and figure out what is intuition and what is ego and intellect. In the end, I had to feel my way through the film. I, I had to intuitively feel my way through the film. And what that meant was not having a list of all the people that I was going to interview, not having a list of all the locations I was going to film, but just being open to what came to me and going, yes, this feels right, this person feels like a good person to interview, and this person doesn't, I'm going to stay away from them. And, but in doing it that way, I ended up getting the best, like the top, <laughs> the top intuitive experts in, in the world. You know, people such as Carolyn Mace and James Van Praag and Norm Shealy and, you know, I was just led to them. And I didn't know who these pe people were before I started the movie. It's not like I had a list of, you know, like the top 25 experts on intuition, I was going to tick them off one by one. I just started out with a camera and sound gear, no money, and I went to India and I just decided that I would start to shoot. And one thing led to another, led to another, led to another, and I've ended up with a movie. <laughs> and what would you say is the main message you have been able to convey with your movie? I think the main message is a twofold one. One is that we all have intuition and that it's not something that is gifted to us, it's not something we can develop it, um, but we all have it. You know, as you said before, we're all born with it and then we can develop it and trust it and so forth. But how we, how we begin to do that is to pay attention to all of the intuitive hits and signals that we get all the time, both inside us and outside us as well. Because the intuition tries to connect with us all the time, it tries to guide us, and in my case with that voice, it tried to keep me safe. You know, so what, what intuition does, and its primary function is to keep us safe and, and alive, because we can't fulfill our purpose in life if we're killed by a truck. <laughs> Definitely. For our Mandalia TV uh, viewers, what would you say when they go to the movie theaters to watch your movie, what do you think they're going to find? Um, I've been screening the film now all around America and the, the emotional impact on the people have from the film has been really quite astonishing to me. Um, people find different things according to their own life experiences and according to what has happened to them in life or what they dream will happen to them in life. Um, but one of the things that comes forward with a lot of people who've seen the film is they, they say this film validates me and what I've been doing and what I've been thinking. It validates, it validates my, yeah, my beliefs and that's fantastic. Wow. It gives them confirmation that they're on the right path and they're not crazy and they're not, they're not you know, some sort of weirdo that thinks that intuition is out in the wacky woo-woo space, you know. Exactly. What would you say that, you know, when you are going to interview those, let's say, gurus or people which are experts on intuition in the world, what would you say that would take you from one to the next, to the next, to the next? Um, I think what happened was that the interviewees that I spoke to realized that the film was going to be made with integrity and they wanted to help me. And so they said, well, where are you going next? And I'd say, well, I'm going to um, Mount Shasta. And they would say, well, if you're going to Mount Shasta, you really should see Michael Tamura. Or I'm going to Rishikesh next. So if you're going to Rishikesh, then you really should see you know, Swamiji you know, Parmath and that sort of thing. So, so what I found, without even asking, people wanted to help me. And I would go, OK. I mean, I, I don't know who Michael Tamura is, but I'll give him a call and say hello and I'll go and have a chat to him. <laughs> Any anecdotes 
something that stood out of your journey to make your movie? I think the most profound anecdote is this. Um, I've been struggling for a long time to make the film. And, you know, like I say, I've been using my, my will force and my ego to try and push through obstacles, and it wasn't working. I was at the point of actually like, trying to figure out whether or not I should actually step away from the film and just leave it and let go of it and, and just give up on it. I went to bed thinking, I've got to make a decision. And that night I had a dream, and the dream was incredibly clear in its message to me. The message was, you have to make this film, you have to make it immediately, don't wait for the budgets, don't wait for the crews, you've got to make the film, make it now, even if it means jury rigging it, you know, with limited resources. The thing about it was this, I woke up out of that dream at 4.44 in the morning. Now I thought, that's weird, and I know enough, I didn't know much, but I, I knew enough that 4.44 was weird. So I googled, I immediately picked up my iPad by the side of my bed and I googled, what does 444 mean? And up came entry after entry after entry telling me essentially the same thing and that is that 444 was a powerful angelic number telling me that my angels and archangels and spirit guides were with me at that moment. They were urging me to move forward with my endeavour. If I followed my inner guidance and my intuition, I would be led to great success. I'm lying there in bed, like coming straight up out of this dream and then reading this about what 444 means and I had to make a decision. <laughs> I had to make a decision. Do I believe this and do I move forward with this belief, believing that my angels and spirit guides would protect me, my intuition would protect me, or do I just put it down as some crazy coincidence and go back to sleep and, you know, and then just forget the movie. And at that moment I decided to believe it and in believing it, I, I made the film and I, it changed my life. What would you say is the main lesson that uh, when we watch your movie we're going to be learning from, from it? The main lesson, I think, I think the main lesson is that intuition is real and it's there to help you and it's actually easier than you think to access it. But you've got to get over fear first. Fear is the big obstacle to intuition and most of us live in fear. And so if you can get over fear and if you can learn to trust your intuition, it's the most incredible resource that you can use to make better choices in life. Do your interviews uh, in, in the movie actually teach how to do that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a section of the film that does go through five steps and how to tap into your intuition. Stop, listen, ask, trust, and follow. And then there's details on you know, what each of those means. So if you stop, listen, ask, trust, and follow, then there are five steps to allow you to access your intuition. Did you become a student or a master while making your movie? <laughs> We're all students, Angel. We're all students. Exactly. I'm not a master, I'm a student. I'll be a student till the day I die. And then I'll be a student when I go upstairs. Awesome. You, how, how would you, um, you know, among your entire, you know, filmmaker career, mm. how would you say that the personal, you know, guiding system relates to the other movies that you've actually done? It doesn't relate at all. It's totally different. Um, so, mm -hmm. For a start, I, I put myself in the movie. I only did that reluctantly right at the very end. I realized that I had to. So this is the first film I've made where I've actually stuck my neck out. Somebody said that I've come out of the spiritual closet <laughs> in making the film, and I guess I have. But um, it's quite different. Um, and this is the first documentary I've made in 30 years. So all of my other movies have been dramatic, um, romantic comedies or thrillers and things like that. So this is the first documentary I've done. But more than that is um, the only film that I've made that is a spiritual film. This is definitely a spiritual film. I would love you to actually talk to our audience in uh, Mindalia TV. Do I have to do it in and, Spanish? And tell them you can do it in any language, <laughs> uh, so, so that you know uh, Bill is a is a loves Spain, has been in Spain consistently. Mm -hmm. But in any in any language, the language that you you feel more comfortable, please, uh, if you would if you wouldn't mind, talk to our audience and tell them about you know encourage them to go and, and watch your movie. Um. If you've ever had a gut feeling or if you've ever had a, just a sense of knowing that something 
is right or wrong, then you'll probably find something, you know, something worthwhile in the film. Um, as far as I know, this is the first film that's really looked at intuition from three perspectives, from the scientific perspective, the religious perspective, and the spiritual perspective. So it doesn't matter what point of view you come from. I mean, even skeptics get something from this film. So, and also, by the way, it's a little bit funny, just like I am. I'm a little bit funny, but not too much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bill. Again, this is uh, Angel Rebo with Mindalia TV from the Conscious Life Expo. Thank you very much for being with us today.